It's been over 40 years since steam-powered trains plied the rails between the American cities, uniting a young nation. But steam's 100-year reign was ended when locomotive technology evolved into the diesel. The arrival of the colorfully painted diesels was in itself a bittersweet finale to a romantic machine whose demise spanned the post-war years 1946 to 1957. However, the advent of the diesel brought great change to the railroads. Positive things began to develop, such as the ability to control several locomotives with only one engineer. The new dynamic, or electric brakes, gave locomotive engineers a new tool to control train speed and slack. The pressure maintaining feature allowed for more consistent train handling with air brakes. The American railroad scene was changing rapidly, so rapidly that by the early 1960s, centralized traffic control had been extended across many main lines in the country. The telegraph, another railway trademark, was fast disappearing as computers were introduced. The two-way radio allowed train crews to communicate with dispatchers, yardmasters, and other train crews miles away. The ever-present caboose, whose long tradition as the sentinel protecting the end of the train, finally succumbed to technological change, replaced by a two-way radio equipped which reported electronically to the engineer. Cellular telephones provided added safety and efficiency to the various railroad departments. Computer usage has evolved to the point where it can assist in dispatching trains over the road in centralized traffic control and track-worn control territories. A device whose roots can also be traced back to the decade of the 1950s might have begun on the New York Central Railroad in Cleveland, Ohio in 1956, as seen here. This was a very early attempt at locomotive remote control. Radio remote control was later developed and placed in service on various steel mill railroads. Wisconsin Central, a leader in railway innovations, foresaw the need for change in practical operation and developed remote control locomotives to act as mine switchers at the Pfizer Company in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan in 1992. The success of this operation prompted the Wisconsin Central to look for other applications on its system. The White Pine subdivision became the next proving ground for remote control locomotive operations. As most of the people currently working for Wisconsin Central are aware, the training department has introduced a program for the instruction of engineers in the operation of remote controlled locomotives at Marshfield, Wisconsin. Students were brought here from WCL subsidiary Algoma Central Railway and the main switching yards at North Fond du Lac, Green Bay, and Stevens Point. A lot of employee involvement has resulted in the development of a quality remote control program. A system of lockout procedures for the protection of maintenance forces and other trains was also designed by the class. A training manual has been written to describe the functions of the equipment. At present, all remote control operations require a separate remote control car to duplicate the various locomotive functions. These remote control cars enable the diesel locomotive to be changed out for maintenance while remote control activities continue with fresh power. The roundhouse crews at Stevens Point are preparing the first straight remote control locomotive for testing. Prior to any work being performed, the remote control crew holds a job briefing with the yardmaster to determine the status of the remote control zone. Then the diesel locomotive and the remote control car are coupled together. The air system and the throttle are cut out on the diesel. Next, the air valves and portable transmitter are cut in on the remote control car. 
the brake pipe leakage test is performed first. The remote control engineer now checks the portable transmitter functions against the locomotive control stand gauges. Next, the air brakes are tested while the locomotive is stationary. Finally, the safety devices on the portable transmitter are tested. The daily inspection card is signed and the crew is ready to work, almost. The remote control zone is inspected for improperly lined switches, blue signals, portable derails, maintenance employees, or equipment following the track and red track flags. Once the zone's integrity has been established, the yardmaster is required to inform the remote control crew of changes in the status of the zone, such as a train required to yard on a specific track. During switching activities, should the remote controlled locomotive move out of radio range, or should the portable transmitter battery fail, or any overriding signal be intercepted by the remote controlled locomotive, the brakes will be applied and locomotive power will cease. Another safety concern in switching operations has been the communications between the engineer and the ground crew. Now the engineer is able to be where couplings need to be made, thus minimizing radio conversation. When a remote control crew member must couple hoses or adjust knuckles or drawbars, the portable transmitter is placed in bypass. The brakes are applied automatically and the throttle will not activate. The Wisconsin Central is an award-winning railroad renowned in the industry for its customer service. This recognition is a direct result of the innovative input, flexibility, and ingenuity of Wisconsin Central Limited employees like you. Employment in 1987 was 650, which has grown to over 2,000 employees at the present time. We serve 8,000 customers nationwide. To say the least, the Wisconsin Central is looking forward to more growth in years to come. But this growth won't come easily. Although engineer-only trains are not really a new idea, they will most certainly revolutionize the American railroad industry. New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and in fact all but one European country have operated with engineer-only trains for many years. In 1996, the Wisconsin Central started engineer-only trains on two of its routes in the state of Wisconsin. One train operates between Nina and Stevens Point. The other connects Maryland and Wisconsin Rapids. Impressive results have been achieved on these current operations. Engineer-only trains didn't just materialize on the Wisconsin Central. Countless hours of research and development proceeded to ensure that we will provide safe, reliable operation. The Wisconsin Central's policy is that an employee in engineer-only service must have consecutive days off. The engineer has a starting time which can be adjusted up to three hours. To maintain a proper balance of rest and work time, the engineer's working hours are comparatively less than the average for other types of road service. Before we discuss the benefits, let's climb aboard engineer-only train number 179 for its Nina to Stevens Point run. First, a job briefing with a qualified transportation employee is held. Among the many items required are a charged portable radio, safety glasses, a discussion of the rule of the week, division notices, track warrant, and hazardous material train placement information. The engineer then makes his way to the train. But before any inspection or work can take place, the engineer must protect himself by placing an orange safety tag on the engine control stand. A check is made to determine that car handbrakes have been released. Next, the engineer performs a walk around inspection of the locomotive including seeing that the headlights and ditch lights are working. He releases the locomotive handbrake and receives departure information from the yardmaster and the dispatcher. With a verified air brake slip indicating the cars in the train have been properly air tested, a roll-by inspection is given by a qualified employee who also observes the end of train device. Origin, 
destination, no intermediate stops along the way, this railroad train is on the path to success. A path not only built with ribbons of steel, but with a safe operation as its guide. The locomotive is equipped with an alerter device designed to cause a penalty application of the brakes should the engineer fail to respond to its warning, bringing the train to a safe stop. Should the engineer need immediate assistance from the dispatcher, the engine radio is equipped with an emergency notification system called ENS. This device provides priority radio contact with the dispatcher simply by dialing HELP on the radio touchpad. A penalty application of brakes by the alerter or an emergency application of brakes initiated by either the engineer or other occurrences such as air hoses parting will also activate the ENS. Electronic wayside detectors at various locations provide the engineer with periodic in route information on the condition of the train. The end of train device provides air pressure and radio transmitter continuity information to the engineer. Engineer only trains will allow the Wisconsin Central the flexibility in having a more productive application of its current workforce. Sensitive freight will finally be able to bypass busy yards and move swiftly towards its final destination. Wisconsin Central will be able to offer our customers a fast-paced alternative to trucking on congested highways by moving their trailers and containers on our flat cars. Short, fast trains will reduce delays at public crossings, helping to ease some of the many traffic problems in our cities. We must constantly look for ways to better serve our customers' needs. This is not only a trademark of the Wisconsin Central, but a necessity to survive in a highly competitive market. Remote control locomotives offer us an opportunity to better serve our customers by allowing us to offer more frequent and dependable freight service. In the past, the efforts of all of us to provide better customer service has resulted in an increase in our overall customer base and by doing so brings to mind a couple of words we all like to hear, job security. The skeptics proclaimed it could never be done. The diesel revolution made steam power obsolete. The development of sophisticated two-way radios and cellular phones and computers made communications instantaneous. The replacement of cabooses by two-way end-of-train devices has caused our nation's railways not to be stranded in the past. Remote control technology will enable us to offer better service to our customers and consequently make us a stronger company. These are just a few of the countless opportunities made available by our engineer only and remote control operations. As always, with Wisconsin Central Limited, the advantages seem endless. The Wisconsin Central will continue to lead this nation's rail industry into the 21st century. All aboard, ride the rails to success.